Hi, uh, my name is Patricia Gonçalves. I'm a Portuguese originally born and raised in the Netherlands. Before the MBA program, I was a senior consultant with Deloitte UK, working on government and public sector. So healthcare, transport, education. Um, yeah, I was consulting on, on, on those specific topics, but always with a sustainability angle. So how to make the delivery of public services more equitable. Um, I also had a, a brief stint with Deloitte Ventures, that is an internal group inside of Deloitte focused on yeah, ventures, specifically on climate tech. Um, so we were trying to see how we could solve um, the supply chain traceability problem that is very much connected to, you know, how, how you measure scope three emissions uh, and how much can you measure of scope three emissions. Um, so I was very lucky to work with that team on that. Um, I also had a super cool project. I don't know if you heard about Neom. It's a, it's a green city being built in, in the Middle East uh, from the ground. Uh, and it, yeah, they, they are targeting to make it as green as possible um, and to host 6 million people um, in the next five to 10 years to live there. Um, before my, my consulting life, I was actually very active in NGOs and international institutions. Um, I was very lucky to, um, when I was 20, um, to, um, to cooperate and, and become part of an NGO called Erasmus Student Network, uh, very much focused on the advancement of quality education and specifically international quality education in Europe, but also abroad. Um, and that took me to the European Parliament as a trainee and later on I was elected as, as one of the youth reps at the, at the Council of Europe that is an international institution, kind of like the United um, Nations of Europe, uh, so very much focused on human rights and I was helping um, policymakers with the human rights uh, in, in, in the youth sector. I think business and for profit is is extremely important if we want to advance sustainability um, in society. Um, and I wanted to see, you know, uh, what what was it like to, to work for business. I know that the European Parliament is, you know, an international institution, but it's 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 still, you know, uh, not run as a business, but there are still business components into it. Um, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, and I'm super happy that I did. I learned uh, valuable technical skills, soft skills. Uh, the pace is also very different. And I think that's, that's something that attracted me to, to the world of business and consulting specifically, um, the fast pace. Um, even though, you know, at some point you, you kind of become tired of it. Um, but um, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I did. Uh, ideally, you know, I would have these two components in my life. Uh, uh, business and doing good for society. Um, how I got into sustainability, well, I was part of an NGO and sustainability is kind of like part of all NGOs and uh, non-government and non-for-profit organizations. Uh, my NGO was specifically working on quality education, one of the S SDGs, um, but I was interacting with other NGOs such as um, Greens, uh, uh, Roma issues, so many others. Um, so I think that sustainability has been, you know, part of my life uh, for for more than a decade. I chose Oxford because of its focus on on impact. Um, I think Oxford is such a brilliant ecosystem of, you know, people working on the physics of climate, people working on the policy of climate. Um, people working on arts, people working on, I don't know, any issue that you think is happening in society, Oxford is working on it. And I found it quite, a, quite, quite interesting um, uh, to not only have the business angle in my life, but to have this interaction of ecosystems and people that you can talk to about various issues. And I think multidisciplinarity is, you know, is, is one of the, the things that hopefully will, will make us solve uh, society's most pressing issues, and it already did, right? For example, AstraZeneca was developed here, the vaccine that helped save countless of lives during during COVID. So I think, you know, the ecosystem, but also specifically the business school with a very strong 
uh, impact angle was what attracted me to Oxford. Plus the countless of nationalities. I honestly don't remember how many nationalities, but there's dozens of them. Um, so this, this multiculturality aspect is, is also very interesting. So this was my, my second time uh, attending COP. Um, my first time was uh, last year in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. Um, I was an NGO representative, but also part of the Deloitte team, my previous employer. Um, and this time I was part of the Oxford delegation. So I applied to be part of the Oxford delegation a couple of months back. Uh, and fortunately I got accepted. I think uh, COP is my annual dose of Red Bull, as I like to describe it. Um, it's, it's just very good to be back to interacting with um, activists, NGOs, policymakers, but also business and, and seeing, you know, again, this ecosystem of, of things happening. Um, again, and COP is, as far as sustainability and climate goes, it's, it's the center. It's, it's where everything happens in terms of policy, but not only policy. Um, so it was very good to be close to the, to the center of the decision-making process. Um, I think uh, there was a lot happening at COP. The money that was raised uh, in the first two or three days, I think it was around 85 billion um, pledged to climate, uh, which is just astounding. Uh, it also marked the first time that there was actually a targeted um, written part in the final recommendations targeting uh, the well not phasing down but tr transition away from fossil fuels uh, and that sends a clear sign to the world uh, about uh, the correct path forward uh, even though it took us a long time because it works in consensus right so everyone all of the member states slash parties have to have to agree um, but still it was a very good outcome of COP also, the role of health and the connection of climate with health was the first time that it was integrated in final recommendations. Um, specifically, uh, my part that I like the most is about the just transition. Um, so how do we ensure that uh, when we transition away from a heavily polluted economy, um, such as the one that we are in now, we don't leave behind vulnerable groups, uh, the vulnerable nations, specifically the global south. Um, um, and, and specifically the, the, the job angle. Um, there are one fourth, I believe, of the workforce right now that is highly vulnerable to climate extremes and the impacts of economic transitions. So when we think about these things at the, at the higher level and at the policy level, uh, we need to think as well of the people that are working right now in, in mining, in agriculture, specifically in the global south, in oil and gas. How do we make sure that those people don't lose their jobs and don't lose, you know, their whole livelihoods um, to, to it. There's two areas of COP. One of them is the blue zone and one of them is the green zone. Um, I had a batch from the UNFCCC, the United Nations component on, on climate change, uh, and that gives me access to the blue zone. The blue zone is where the decisions actually happen, where you have access to the decision making rooms where, you know, governments uh, and and representatives are speaking about you know what is happening and what are the drawbacks and what are the progress around the, the policy making that does not give me access to um, you know actually uh, write policy or interact with the policy in any way um, it does give me access if i want to uh, liaise um, with with specific people um, around issues that uh, that are important um, but I was not there as a policy slash uh, um, uh, policy maker, let's say, or part of a country. I was there to um, get updated on the, on the most pressing issues of climate change and bring that back to Oxford and specifically the business school and also, you know, to, to, my, to my own life and professional life. I think the Oxford MBA is just awesome in this. Um, and from what I heard, it's probably the best one in doing this. Uh, we have a very strong um, academic component on, on impact, um, sustainability, climate. Um, we started the first term, uh, Michael Mus, uh, with um, 
an electric motorsports company, working with an electric motorsports company, um, and aim on, on reducing their scope three emissions. Um, so building a, a business case around that um, with a real company, right? That is, is looking for solutions in that area. Um, we had um, a, a specific um, class on non-market strategies. So market strategies are super important, the financial angle, the economic angle, but what about the policy? What about the multi, um, the, the, the cooperation between countries, right? To actually implement that, that business part. Um, and right now in the second term, again, a live case uh, on one of the, the um, I think one of the biggest wind farm producers in all the world. Um, and we're looking to see how they can interact with various stakeholders, government, academia, NGOs, to achieve a just transition in Southeast Asia, specifically in Malaysia. Um, so to have that opportunity to, to interact with companies um, and to help them build uh, their business model uh, in, a, you know, in a system-wide approach is, is just, yeah, incredible. Scope 3 emissions are the ones that are connected to the supply chain. Um, so they are not um, directly um, emitted by the company, but they're still part of their supply chain activities. So they still need to be accounted for. And I, I think that's, that's a super uh, important question. Some people just want to push climate change and sustainability to the policymakers and the people that are actually building policy. Uh, but business is an important fabric of our society, not only to help with funding because governments and multilateral banks, they, they, you know, there's just not enough money to help us solve this big pressing issue. Um, and business has an important role here, but also on the implementation side of things, it's all good to talk about solar. It's all good to talk about renewables. It's all good to talk about carbon capture, but how do you actually implement those solutions? And there is a lot of, of smart people in, in businesses that are working on this and have been working on this for a long time. Um, so the implementation angle is, um, is super important as well. Um, and I think the coalition building angle between businesses, academia, NGOs and public sector is needed. And that was one of the, um, the main uh, uh, things that popped out of, of the Glasgow COP, right? This big coalitions between, between businesses to help us push uh, the climate agenda forward. Um, yeah, but, but also like looking at especially the, the VCs and, um, and, and the climate tech part, um, there's a lot of things uh, happening around carbon capture, uh, around traceability of emissions that this really cool startups are, are doing. Um, and usually it's, it's businesses and VCs and other actors that, that fund this. So yeah, again, it's, um, there's also an R&D component here that is, that is super important. I think the, the carbon capture part is super important according to the International Energy um, Agency. Uh, we won't achieve uh, the, the 1.5 if we don't uh, consider as well carbon capture. Um, so technologies that, um, that are being developed in this area and the scalability of carbon capture systems is, is something to, to keep your eye on. Um, on. On a personal perspective, I think the job and the just transition angle is, is also something to keep your eye on more on the social aspect of whatever we're doing to make sure that uh, vulnerable nations and groups are, are not affected by, by this big policy changes. This will not come as a surprise. Uh, I'm searching for a climate and sustainability role. Um, and that can be either implementing policy and sustainability policy in businesses, can be a climate tech role, or can be a wider ESG uh, type role in a, in a corporation or even in an international institution. Um, I just, you know, want to, uh, in an ideal world, post MBA, um, help with, with, with the climate and sustainability agenda and bring that forward. Um, 
in a corporate setting or in, a, in an international institution setting.